All right, guys, back out here in my shop and got the uh, plans ready for the uh, CNC router here. If anybody wants those, let me know. Uh, got them uh, zipped up and I uh, got the DXF, the full scale DF, DXF files uh, in one zip file and then all the PDFs for the assembly drawings and sub assemblies and all that in another zip file and it's it's pretty good size it's about nine meg i think uh, but if anybody wants those just let me know uh, just uh wanted to get out here today and talk about uh something that i make sure everybody's completely understanding you know i've, I've done a lot of talking about mach 3 uh and you know people see me here at the computer and make the machine run and I, I but I don't want anybody to get an impression that that's all you need to make a CNC machine run uh, really there's like three steps to uh, the, the process of getting it from an idea up here in your head to getting it into the computer where you can run the machine and one is the first step is using some kind of CAD uh, software or either using the CAD part of your programming software uh, you know because sometimes like for example my vcar pro you could s just open up a new file and start from scratch and draw something in there if you were you know really if you know if that's how you knew how to draw uh, it, it, you know to me the the CAD side of those kind of programs are aren't as good obviously as the the standalone CAD program so you need some kind of a CAD program to draw your things up and then you, the step two would be taking what you've drawn and importing that you know either with a DXF file some of them use PDF files uh, EPS files there's all different kinds of formats uh, but it usually needs to be in a vector format uh, and you would import that into your programming software and then that is what you would use to generate your G code once you have your G code generated, that's what you put on a flash drive or whatever, and you bring out here and you connect it to your computer and load it into Mach 3, and that's what runs your machine. Mach 3 is strictly a control software. It's not really uh, a programming software. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that there's really three steps. You got to have CAD, you got to have uh, uh, programming, and then you've got to have control. Uh, I use Mach 3 for my control software. I use VCar Pro uh, for my programming software. And in CAD, I, you know, you can use pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, you know, it could be AutoCAD or SolidWorks. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything near that fancy. It could be just a CAD program you bought off the shelf at Walmart or something. It doesn't have to be uh, anything. Just anything that you can draw with and, and usually just pretty much any kind of software that you draw with uh, has the ability to save it as a DXF format. That's pretty much the, the standard. So uh, so just want to make sure everybody understands the difference between the controller software and the programming software. Okay, another thing I want to talk about real quick. Uh, I was talking with somebody the other day and they asked me about, uh, you know, with this machine, would you be able to hook up a shop back to uh, to work some dust collection? And absolutely, you could. You know, you, in fact, over there on my other machine, I have a shop back sitting beside it. I've got a hose running up. Uh, it's coming down a loop. In fact, that's kind of why I put this loop here when I designed this. Is so you could. Right now, I'm just using it to run the cord for the router through. But you could put a, a dust hose, and then you could also make you a dust hood or something down here and have it going. The only thing you do have to be careful about is the static electricity. You don't want to, I mean, you can run your vacuum while you're, while you're cutting, but if you, if you just grab the shop vac by itself, you know, the, the hose off the shop vac and start vacuuming, make sure you've got your controller turned off. You know, don't try to do it while, uh, while it's running because, you know, if you mess up and touch the wrong thing, you're liable to fry your board and your controller. And, it's really not worth taking that chance so just let it make a mess and clean it up afterwards after you shut the controller off so that's just a couple of things I want to talk about uh, today uh, like I said the plans are ready so if anybody wants them let me know uh, if, you see that I, if you get a set of plans and you see that I missed something or I left something out or you know I don't think I did but you never know uh, 
you know, let me know and I'll, I'll get you that information as well. I really think it's going to be easy though because if you use the full size DXF, you just print them out and use those as the paper templates and you pretty much got it made then. You know, like I said, I've, I've pretty much made all the work as easy as I can for you. So, anyway, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate all the people that are going on my website and, and shoot me a little donation. Uh, that really helps to uh, keep me motivated and offset the cost of building stuff like this and, and uh, all the time spent doing the drawings and all. Uh, makes me uh, ready to go on, move on to the next one. So, really appreciate that. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess that's going to do it for this video. So, again, thanks for all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed already to this YouTube channel, please do. And we'll catch you next time.